This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. Tiki Turmoil. For just a regular old 1v1, I had to find something that wasn't a 200 game long series. Just to be able to cast quickly in the north as the cyan marked of Kane. This is Masterleaf. All right, in the south as the yellow Steel Talons. This is Bike Rush Owns. And this is an R16 game. This is not R18, so it is a little bit of an older game from the perspective of when this releases. And for some of you, that uh, makes a big difference. I think most people just want to see an entertaining game and they don't care what uh, community patch version it's on. But we do have a whole bunch of both Kane's Wrath and Red Alert 3 action coming. But they're all series. They're all going to be multi-game videos. And I just have not had time to cast and, more importantly, edit and render all of that kind of stuff. So I'm doing some more single games here. And then hopefully soon we'll be able to get into some of the... Actually, I've got a ton of Tib Wars as well. I just remembered I have a whole Tib Wars tournament that I have like three or four rounds to cast from. And uh, I also have a ton of Tib Wars. So there's a lot of multi-game stuff coming up. But I wanted to get out some more singles. And of course, Master League versus Bike Rush owns, but Marked of Kane versus Steel Talons. And this time, Master Leaf is going to be with the one with the EMP nod hands under his control. And Bike Rush owns is going to be the one perhaps rig rushing. We'll see if he actually goes for any rigs in this match. But we can expect lots of behemoths, the Marv, and some big, heavy rail guns to be anointing the Tiki Turmoil map. Pretty standard opener, it looks like, for both of these guys. Some uh, pretty consistent anti-scouting attempted by both of them. And Bike Rush even burrowing a foxhole over at his opponent's blue. And then also cutting off the direct path to the defensive tower. So Bike Rush owns getting a really good foothold there in the middle of the map. And establishing himself quite well as far as map vision and map presence goes. Master Leaf goes for the full scout with the buggy. He kind of confirms everything is normal. Quick expansion. And it looks like maybe a scouting pit bull did get cleaned up as this double War Factory play does get revealed. No refinery at the expansion. It's going to be behind the economy of Bike Rush Owns, but the exchange is going to be Bike Buggy and hopefully so much of it that Bike Rush Owns just can't cope. Now we'll see if Master Leaf actually sticks with this consistent bike buggy or he starts switching it up and adding a couple of harvesters. He's going to go straight for the natural expansion. This is where the fewer harvesters are, but the more important longer term harvesters. The first Titan is out, but this first harvester, actually this first harvester may survive. The juking is good enough. No, the reinforcement bikes do claim the kill. Master Leaf gets one kill, but he trades so many bikes and buggies for it unable to execute a clean kill against that harvester bike rush owns gets his pound of flesh as recompense now we are still four harvesters on the main field as bike rush owns transfers over an additional harvester and he did have one over at that blue tiberium and just as it transfers over master leaf perfect with the timing emp followed by mass bike attack and he's right on the edge there making these titans walk as far as possible now it does take a minute for that emp to reset so there isn't going to be a quick grab of a second harvester for Master Leaf, but that was a much cleaner kill. It helps make up for the fact that he is going no expansion? No, he's moved his MCV to the far side of the field, which I guess gives him a better defensive position, perhaps? It gives him more build radius on this side of the field, in any case, which is closer to his third, but I'm not, I'm not sure if it gives him that big of an advantage, and certainly his main field is about to dry up. He's still got lots of harvesters there, six in total. And as a result, he's just now getting his expansion harvester. But he's going to be able to grab another harvester of Bike Rush Owns. Gets a couple of shots on the rear armor, but no, he's going to have to really commit for it if he wants the complete kill. The harvester jukes around to the other side of the power plant, and Bike Rush Owns a moment too late with his body blocking power plant, but he gets every single bike, every single buggy, and kills that attack once again. Master Leaf. 
I'm not sure that he's actually come out ahead in these attacks, but he has been tenacious with them. And now as we transition into the natural expansion, into our tier two, into our even our tier three tech, Bike Rush Owns is set up fantastically. He's hurting a little bit. His, uh, his harvester numbers aren't where he would like them to be, but they're not so far down dramatically. It's not like he's got zero harvesters here. He's still got three on the natural expansion and one or two that could transfer over to fill him out at the natural. And he's got his tier three coming up. So rail guns possibly being added on might be adaptive armor first. I mean, he could even go for tungsten shells considering it's Mark, uh, but uh, I don't think he will. I think he'll stick with one of the uh, more core upgrades for the start. Is that a... No, that's another... Another airfield? Just the one airfield. No double airfield Firehawks just yet. We'll see if the Firehawks are the choice for Bike Rush Owns. Hammerheads and Rocket Troopers could be a nice addition as well. Buggy's kind of pushing forward. Masterleaf happy to stand on this extremely low-tech, low-health army. Against Titans, it's nice to have that decoy army. Every single shot that hits the decoy is a full reload time and uh, kind of a saving shot for one of your actual units. There's an engineer cap as well. I think Masterleaf grabbed the tip spike and Bike Rush Owns just captured it back, barely not managing to get the kill on Bike Rush's engineer. Masterleaf, unfortunately, going to have to retreat backwards. Curious place for an operations center as your kind of forward shield right on the front line there. The first thing for the Pitbulls, the Wolverines, and the Titans to pick off, as well as an upgraded power plant. Up to Tier 3, Harvester gets tagged just a little bit there, but the majority of the damage goes to the refinery. The Tech Lab is here, but we don't see supercharged particle beams or Tib Core or even EMP coils. Nothing getting upgraded at the current moment. Bike Rush owns very slow to move on to his third base. You would expect to see this sort of thing a little bit quicker from Bike Rush. Nice response time, just barely in time before those rockets crash into the unpacked or the packed up MCV. The laser fence immediately gets added on and Bike Rush owns on the defensive the entire time. The one time he steps out onto the other side of the map, he makes it pretty much as far as the middle of the map before he's forced to turn around by Masterleaf. And Masterleaf bringing the pain, bringing the aggression here on the deserts of Tiki Turmoil. Did he just clone some... Uh yeah, it looks like down at the natural expansion, yeah. So he, he decoy armied harvesters, which are, of course, stealthed, which is kind of an interesting game design choice that the decoy army does get the stealth as well, which does kind of make them a brilliant choice for a decoy army and as a scout. But uh, there they do get revealed. I think the Pitbull doing the, doing the work there, and the railguns have also been revealed. So one refinery down... It may have been better to actually go for the third base refinery, but it looks like Masterleaf wants to force the harvesters there because he's got bikes ready and waiting. I feel like these guys are just smurfing as each other. Like Masterleaf is really the one playing with the Bike Rush name and Bike Rush is the one playing with the Masterleaf name. So that was the play, that was the plan. It didn't quite work out, but uh, Tib Vane Detonation fires off, catches a couple of the Titans but honestly, Tip Vane Detonation has been reduced in power so much over the years that it doesn't explode armies like it once did. And in this particular case, pretty much everything survives. Maybe a couple of things go down, but it doesn't really tag any harvesters. A couple of harvesters low health, and Master Leaf may be able to exploit that in just a moment. Two more harvesters getting cleaned up. Master Leaf with his Vertigo Bombers, it seems doing some harvester killing even with the tail gunner gets a little bit of a gets a hammerhead and uh not quite a second hammerhead but he at least gets the one and that's another thing that we don't see very often is the fact that the vertigo bomber does have a tail gunner that will shoot other aircraft so you do have a weak anti-air attack in the vertigo bomber and it does have the ability to attack even though it uh, is out of primary ammo. Vertigo Bomber's great against units. Going to be able to clean up one Titan there. 
A second Titan nearly going down. No, two Titans do get cleaned up, but a third Titan is extremely low health. And a good handful of Titans are at about half health as well. Operations Center and Upgraded Power Plant both taking a bit of damage. I assume that was from a uh, from an Orca Strike. But it's going to be Avatars versus this army. This is the best situation for Master Leaf. It's starting to feed in a little bit at a time. These two Avatars need to engage these Titans on the other side. And it looks like the Titans may be able to overwhelm. But the reinforcements with the EMPs. Let's see if Master Leaf can break this attack from Bikerush. He goes for the Tier 3. No more Obelisks. No more Avatars as the Tier 2 gets replaced. And this obelisk, obelisk standing strong, but once again the Tier 2 gets cut down. The EMP a moment too late to save the Tier 2 in the Operations Center as a massive EMP lands. And it looks like Master Leaf is going to be able to hold the EMPs holding his front line as the Orca Strike comes in, missing the mark because it's already dead. And the Hammerhead will get cleaned up at the hands of the Vertigo Bombers, the last bit of hope for Bike Rush's attack. But honestly, I think Bike Rush did most of what he wanted to do. He didn't slow down the third base, which would have been nice if he had been able to cut off the momentum of the third base, sniping a refinery or killing that war factory. That would have been nice, but he got the tech, a full tech reset, maybe even a tech reset and a half by double killing ooh, two more harvesters going down. Bike Rush owns is actually starting to take the damage. And this is where we can see that it's Master Leaf playing and not Bike Rush, because Bike Rush wouldn't kill Harvesters with a Vertigo Bomber. Not that he's, like, morally opposed to the idea or anything. It's just not really his style, and that's much more a Master Leaf style kind of thing. He can't kill him with bikes and buggies very well, but he can kill him with Vertigo Bombers late in the game. Master Leaf returning home with those Vertigos. Low power mode on that refinery. A bit of a mistake for Master Leaf. He initially had it there probably when he was getting attacked, but now it's actually caused a bit of problem. He's losing out on a bit of income as those two harvesters just sit idly by and wait. Another air tower gets deployed. No second refinery at the third base. And it looks like another harvester kill. Bike Rush Oatens doesn't necessarily need a ton of harvesters with only really, well, he's actually got two green fields because his main base has rebuilt so much. But here is the hammerhead transition. Mass air, it's almost always a winning strategy. And I don't want to say that because, uh, you know, some people go mass air and they're terrible at it. But in this kind of a case, mass air is a great strat for Bike Rush Oatens. Mixing in with a couple of pit bulls as well. And Bike Rush Oatens is looking to sew this one up. It looks like in the south, Master Leaf might be initiating a base trade. He might be trying to just walk across the map with his little avatar army and go for as many kills as he can on the buildings of bike rush owns the main base is gonna get melted this is a huge cache of tiberium almost as much as he's got at his third base maybe even more as bike rush owns now has to contend with the entire ground army but this means it's vaunt it's mo the main base is vulnerable to the hammerheads the entire anti-air armada has slipped over to the left side of the map master leaf has left himself massively open that bike buggy was his defense against the harvesters and now he's back he's drawn the harm the hammerheads in and the hammerheads going for the harvesters there the harvesters completely undefended as long as that bike buggy chases the hammerheads, then Master Leaf maybe can keep them away from the main base or the new main base. Master Leaf has gotten some value from this army, been able to advance a little ways, but he hasn't cut off the build radius just yet, trading well against the low health pit bulls and the low health buildings with his avatars but these hammerheads coming in now that the bike buggy has been thinned out a little bit there's the split from the hammerheads can bike rush owns actually stop this army it's the dodge and weave with the hammerheads that will save him as the infantry numbers grow slowly he's picking off buggy after buggy the reinforcements are too slow and too few for master leaf master leaf not focusing the hammerheads every single bike buggy getting cleaned up the avatars being forced to walk away and bike rush owns holds the ground his new main base is preserved. The Rocket Squad's getting a couple of kills as the Raider Buggies and the bikes run away. Even an Avatar taking a bit of extra damage as these Hammerheads dodge and weave, doing as much as they can against this retreating army. Pitbulls are here, maybe even to snipe down that Vertigo. And the wind getting knocked out of the sails of Master Leaf.
No more air tower. No more tech. All low tier stuff. Master Leaf, unlike most non players, seems to struggle when it comes to bike buggy. At least against a guy like Bike Rush Owens, we saw early game, he tried he tried some smart stuff. He had some good timings, he had some good reads on the game, but he just was not able to get much done with that bike buggy, whereas we see more Nod-centric players like Bike Rush Owens, he's able to get an amazing amount done with bike buggy. That's almost maybe his bread and butter, or at least it was for years and years. Master Leaf, on the other hand, when it starts getting into Avatar Vertigo Bomber weirdness, where players are maybe a little bit less comfortable, that's where we see Master Leaf start to shine. But he needs that pillar of technology supporting him. And Bike Rush Owens came in and knocked it completely out. Subsequently, Master Leaf's main base has also regrown a decent amount, not nearly as much as Bike Rush Owens, where Bike Rush Owens is actually losing out on almost an entire green tip field worth of cash. All right, Adaptive Armor has been activated. Avatars have found a good angle to engage, but it's up to the Bike Buggy to go for the mass kill on these Titans and not just get crushed. The rear armor is being exploited. Look at that Master Leaf, not going to be able to defend his Avatars in time. He finally chases away those Hammerheads, and one Avatar does survive. There's no Engineer, it looks like, packed along with this army, which means this Husk is vulnerable. Bike Rush owns sneaking around to the rear armor, but it's not enough to totally defeat this army. It does does look like the Avatar Husk is going to be rem is going to remain unclaimed. I think Master Leaf will snipe it as he leaves. Uh, Master Leaf, turn around maybe, get the kill on that Husk. It looks like he maybe was about to and then decided not to. Uh, I think he's wasting shots on the Missile Squad. A mistake here from Master Leaf. Not attack, not attacking the correct unit at all. Buggies are going to swing. Our bikes are going to swing back through. I think to kill the husks, maybe? Yeah, he's gonna go for the husks. Don't let Bike Rush Owens capture those husks. Need a couple of those bike shots to get the kill on them. Master Leaf walking forward with a half health avatar. Maybe he'll actually attack the correct unit this time as he starts melting these titans. Missile Squad here gonna get dealt with by the buggy. Hammerheads in and out, dodging and weaving, but they don't even need to because the bikes are on the wrong side of that avatar. Down to the last few units, the last few rockets. If Bike Rush Owens was a little bit less careful with his hammerheads, he would be falling to pieces. Master Leaf re-grabs this Tiberium Spikes. If Master Leaf had been a little bit uh, more cautious maybe, or maybe a little bit more invested into some anti-air solutions. Oh, he sells off his MCV, so that is going to signal the end for Master Leaf. He's got one last cash infusion. He's got no refinery in the north. He just is hoping to get out enough bike and buggy to withstand this Steel Talons upgraded army. Bike Rush owns and Master Leaf, none of the, neither of them really going for the multi-MCV play, something so common in higher level Kane's Wrath, and yet here, it is completely absent in the deserts of the Walrus Man. Triple War Factory, he's not, okay, yeah, he is definitely not actually producing from three War Factories at once. Probably should sell one of those off. I mean, at this point, he needs the cash, and an Avatar Husk does get grabbed by Bike Rush Owns. A critical blow there to Master Leaf. He's got three full, four? Loads of Tiberium heading to his main base. Engineer there from the MCV south. Master Leaf EMPs have not been his friend. Now, we do have adaptive armor to help negate that. But even sneaking in uh, engineers to try and EMP these buildings wouldn't necessarily... Engineers, no. <laughs> sneaking in units to EMP these buildings could be a potential point of where Master Leaf could get some value. Hammerheads jump on the Hammerheads. If you can shut down the Hammerheads, it makes the army that much easier to deal with. And now Master Leaf is kind of caught. He's got all of these low health units that have to run the gauntlet back past these big punchers and these watchtowers as Bike Rush Owns just pulls this army apart bit by bit, piece by piece. And Master Leaf runs with his Harvester gonna try and just jump on the hammerheads at the very least try and get them when they turn around like that master leaf not able to outmaneuver bike rush owns the fact that bike rush owns 
has gotten this much done with the hammerheads while losing so few of them is really frustrating for Master Leaf. It's one of those things that is just so difficult to deal with. Every time he thinks he can get a shot, Bike Rush Owens pulls the hammerheads away just in time, and Master Leaf is unable to get any real damage against them. He's whittled it down to just three, and one of them was at so low ho health for so long, just a shot or two away from absolute annihilation, and he was never able to get the kill on it. Master Leaf sells off one of the War Factories. It's a little too late. He's got four Titans and an Avatar bearing down on his front door. Knock, knock, knock. Guess who's here? Pain and suffering are here to beset your homeland. Hammerheads and Titans going to finish out the game in classic Steel Talons fashion. Railguns raining down upon his opponent even going for the crush of that buggy the manual crush as that bike spawns into oblivion and whispers goodbye as he slides into the nighttime and that will do it for master leaf an almost amazing game from him against bike rush owns as steel talons but in the end he just barely doesn't slip it out in the end he barely does it make it happen bike rush owns bring the steel talents we didn't see a marv we didn't see behemoths we only ever saw really titans and pit bulls at least on the ground i mean those hammerheads were critical as well but that is how things turned out and check that out bike rush owns ahead and behind ahead and behind and behind in the end that gdi efficiency coming through for bike rush owns but in the end just more cash only 12,000 credits spread out over 21 minutes, but just more cash in the bank of Master Leaf. And uh, that bike buggy, it hits a point where it's really good in certain situations and against certain players. But if you know how to play against bike buggy, it just does not get very much done. Master Leaf almost crushing Bike Rush Owns wholeheartedly, but Bike Rush Owns standing strong defensively for so much of that game and gets the win on Tiki Turmoil. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cyber, signing out.